بركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله العالمين الحمد لله ذي الملك والملكوت ذي العزة والجبروت الحمد لله حي قيوم لا ينام عزيز لا يضام قهار لا يرام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Oh you believe Fear Allah as he should be feared and they not accept on the state of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful bestow upon us the gift to die in the state of Islam. Allahumma ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Amma ba'd yaqulu Rabbul Izzati subhanahu wa ta'ala fi surat al-hajji ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim inna Allah yudafi'u anil ladhina amanu inna Allah la yuhibu kulla khawalin kafur. In surat al-hajji Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah defends the believer defends yudafi'u inna Allah la yuhibu does not like subhanahu wa ta'ala those who are deceitful and those who are betrayers and here and amazingly when you read this ayah Allah proclaiming to the whole humankind to the believers that he's defending so he's the one subhanahu wa ta'ala who took upon him this, aside, this task to defend the believers. And when we say Allah defending the believer, this is the peak really of caring, the peak 
of help, the peak of support, the peak of the way to guide you, to take care of you, to care about you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given us this sunnah because it is a sunnah ilahiyya. And when we say it's a sunnah ilahiyya, it's a divine law which is governing the whole humankind based on their uh, adherence to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the beginning of the creation to the end of the creation, which is meaning to apply for us. Allah defend you. Allah help you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala care about you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you. Allah support you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's taking in charge that himself, not given to anybody else from his creation of the angels or anything. It's him subhanahu wa ta'ala directly does this for you. However, how someone will be able to be a candidate to such a great, noble, and really honored to be defended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is in the same ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala inna alladhina amanu those who believe. Those who believe. Therefore, the belief is what makes you to be able or to be ascend yourself, to honor yourself, to be, subhanAllah, ascending to this rank of being defended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, when you look at it, this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al Hajj. So the belief has a nature, has an element, has a definition. The belief here is the complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is the complete submission because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought it after the rites of the Hajj. The rites where the complete submission is done. So the rites in these days that we are witnessing and observing and celebrating. And the best of the celebration, therefore, is to completely submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To completely surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this surrendering by glorifying Allah, venerating Allah, remembering Allah, and saying the whole the tasbih by praying, by fasting, by subhanAllah, making dua, beseeching, begging, in humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why I said before it is some ayat, and give the good news to the mukhbitin, those humble ones, those humble who seek in the pleasure of Allah, those humble who seek to be a accepted by Allah, those humble who are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their heart, those humble who are fasting for the sake of Allah, like the day today they are seeking that forgiveness, they are seeking that reward, they are seeking to have their heart also joined with the people today in Arafah. Complete submission. Complete submission. And this complete submission is a comprehensive submission. That subhanAllah involves your thinking, your feeling, your soul, your heart, your action, all your being. And that's it, the sub submission. The submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are standing before Allah in your prayer, you're asking Him, you're talking to Him directly because you know He's listening to you. That's where you take yourself to that level, to that peak of the submission. And the ummah, the community, who bring their roles united together under this, under this way of the submission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the ummah that bow down to Allah, that is the community that surrender to Allah, that is the community that is grateful to Allah, that is the community that Allah will help, that is the community that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will empower, that is the community that Allah will Allah establish, that is the community that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make on their hands the work of establishing justice and establishing the true equality and establishing the social order or the social justice into the society. That is the Ummah. And these are the days, these are the days where the complete submission for us, as a believer, we need to strive to have that complete submission, a complete submission that it really generate in you the power to be raising for the good. And a complete submission to help us remember our great predecessors, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow on His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and His companion because of reaching and attaining this peak of the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah give them the support and the help and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala empower them as He said in Surah Al-Hajj after the ayah that I have mentioned قَالَ أَلَّذِينَ إِمَّكَّنَّاهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَوُ الزَّكَاةَ وَأَمَرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنَهَوْا عَنِ الْمُنْكِرِ those when we establish them on the earth they establish the prayer and they pay the zakat and they enjoy good and they forbid evil and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala return all the matters therefore our arafah and our Eid is a Eid of submission to Allah is a Eid 
of humility to Allah is a Eid to elevate yourself to the highest level of perfection and the highest level of perfection means that you become a complete servant to Allah deep humility into your heart and subhanallah your salat it becomes a delight the patience that you use as a virtue and a provision to face the challenges of this world becomes a sanctuary of safety to you and all of that subhanallah because of this beautiful submission in the submission that we do today and this is, is our Eid and this is why these days are the greatest day of the life of the world however Harafa is not just to fast and then the Eid to Salat al-Eid and you offer your Adhiya and it ends as a believer we need to stop being superficial we need to really dig into the meaning of what really means to be a Muslim to be completely submitted to Allah we are in these days and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he addressed to Mu'ad telling him I love you and he instructed him a dua that's the expression of the love of the Prophet sallallahu to his companion uh, Mu'ad قال, say at the end of every salat Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik oh Allah help me and guide me to better worship you, to better remember you, and to better be grateful to you. And this is what we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these days to help us be better servant, to generate in us that strong power inside us, to become a willpower, guiding us and helping us to raise for the good. Therefore, this Eid is always at the spirit of the Eid in Islam. It's not an end. It's not just for joy. The joy is to celebrate a new beginning. And the beginning for the believer is the beginning of generating this power to raise toward the good. And that is the Eid. And this power will cannot be generated without trying and striving to get to the peak of the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, after you slaughter and after think, Allah does not take the flesh from what you're slaughtering. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not reach him the blood. What reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your piety, is your humility, is your devotion, is your subhanallah, your worship, if your love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is your obedience. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does get from you Allah subject make it subservient to you so you'll be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala Allah ala ma hadakum Allah had you this this occasion so you can glorify Allah a glorify Allah is the means to the complete submission and then after that qala wa bashir al muhsinin and give the glad tidings for the good doors after this ayah, you complete your submission by praising Allah, by offering the sacrifice, by have the testimony or the proof of your piety in your heart that you're doing this for the sake of Allah, for the sake because you love Allah, you love the way of Allah, you have the concern that you, subhanAllah, you're going to meet Allah, you think of that, you live for that, you live by that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, now I will defend you. That's when the ayah comes. قال, right after said, Give the glad tidings to the Muhsinin. Who the Muhsinin who completed their steps of submission. Because the superficial way is just to enjoy the tradition, but not to change the heart. For this reason, there is condition for us to benefit of the meaning of Islam to Allah, condition. The scholar, rahimahumullah ta'ala, some of the scholar, combine them in seven conditions. The first condition is knowledge. To know who the one you're worshipping. To know, ithbatan wa nafyan, ithbatan who is Allah, wa nafyan negating on him that does not befit his greatness, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and negating any partner to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, therefore this knowledge to know. To know that your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is Allah. And knowing that, knowing that, that what elevate you to the peak of the whole humankind. Qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Qulil hamdulillah. 
Say Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have a son. Say Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have a partner. Say Alhamdulillah that does, does not have someone, someone from an alliance that will pressure him or to force him to guide or to take any decision. Say Alhamdulillah and give, make glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the ilm. This is the knowledge. قل الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في المرك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا and then after the knowledge comes the certainty I'm certain of this I'm not wishy washy I'm not subhanallah always engaging in the discussion God exists God does not exist this is the atheist said يا أخي this is يقين you know that your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created you. He's the one who's providing you. He's the one who's going to cause you to die. He's the one who's going to bring you back to life. That's the yaqeen. And the yaqeen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make it a bridge to the action. قَالَ إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا The true believer are those who believe in Allah and His Messenger. Then they would not have any doubt. Why? Because before that, the Bedouin, when they came to the Prophet sallallahu they said, Ya Rasulullah, we believe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to his prophet, tell them you do not believe yet. You just surrendered. And that's why our submission have a journey, a journey that you elevate yourself to cleanse your heart from any, subhanAllah, any doubt. And these doubts, subhanAllah, it might be not doubt in the existence of Allah, like these people they're talking, you know, in the society. Doubt in Allah is providing you or not. Doubt is Allah is listening to you or not. Doubt is Allah is answering your dua or not. Doubt that someone subhanAllah thinking maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not around him because he lives his life subhanAllah is like Allah is not, does not exist around him despite the fact he believes and he prays every day. Therefore the bridge toward the action is the yaqeen. And yaqeen is not enough when you have the certainty of that of the belief in Allah and his message is not enough because Fir'aun he had yaqeen. Fir'aun, he had yaqeen. He has certainty that God exists. He has certainty what Musa alayhi salam brought to him. It was the truth. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Naml, قَالَ وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوهُ They denied it. They rejected it. Despite the fact they were certain of it. Certain. In themselves, they were certain that what Musa brought is the truth. But they were transgressor and arrogant. Therefore, it is not enough the knowledge and then the, uh, the yaqeen. And after the yaqeen comes what is the step after people like Fir'aun. So they know the truth because they're arrogant, they will not. Qala after the yaqeen comes the acceptance, al-qabool. You accept it. You accept it in your heart. You embrace it with your soul. And then you act upon it. And you say it with your time. And you start to say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah to feed your cells in your body, to feel the circulation of the blood into your soul, and that blood, the spiritual blood that we're talking about, and to give life to this heart. And that's after the acceptance comes the fourth condition, which is al anqiyadu is to submit. So subhanAllah, look the submission when it comes. Hear the true submission. You do it with knowledge, you do it with certainty, you do it with acceptance and embracing and adhering. That's when they come to submission. So when you say aslam to, and you didn't even check in yourself, you have done all these steps, then you are like the Bedouin. We are like the Bedouin that they came to the Prophet ﷺ. Despite the fact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't reject them, he said, if you are sincere in your action, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you. But you do not have the iman. You still, you don't have the faith in your heart. Because the faith is a journey to get it. The faith is change how you look. When you look at yourself in your mirror, you look different. And you know it. And you will know it. When the faith comes to your heart, you look different. You can see it in the mirror. When you look at picture, he said, SubhanAllah, this is times of Jahiliya before. You can see it. You look the same for other people, but you look different. Because you love other things. You love the prayer before you love the game. You love the Quran before you used to love the music. It changed. All your soul changed. That's the inqiyad. And this, after this fourth shart, comes the most important element, which is make us to be true believers, is as-sidqu, truthfulness. 
You be truthful in your action. You love Allah, then act upon the love of Allah. You love the Prophet Sallallahu then act truly upon the love of Allah, of the, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And after the Siddiq comes the Ikhlas. The Ikhlas is the sincerity, you're going to be checking your action. You want to do it truly, sincerely, in devotion to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. There's an amazing story of one of the writers from the writer's predecessors. He was taking a bread, you know, a big tray of bread. It has on top of it, you know, uh, oil and, and uh, honey. And carrying it to his family, they're waiting for their meal. And there is he seeing on the side of the street, this poor person with his child, looking at the bread, staring at the bread. He realized that they are hungry. He get the tray and give it to them. When he went home and he slept, he didn't have anything. He wanted to sleep to avoid, you know, issues with the family. And he saw in his dream, subhanAllah, that Allah accepted him and had pleasure on him because of his sadaqah. That sadaqah. That small sadaqah. Then he asked, it's like his, an angel was talking to him, he said, what about my hajj? What about my salah? What about my siyam? What about my, 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 my? To them, look at your deeds. And every deed, subhanAllah, is like a file. He lift the file and he found it rotten inside. Siyam, a lot, subhanAllah, of rotten spaces. Hajj, a lot of shortcoming. Siyam, a lot of shortcoming. So this ibadat it didn't elevate him to be worthy to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because it didn't have siddiq and sincerity. They didn't have truthfulness. They didn't have sincerity. And that's why that small sadaqah from his heart, that word, subhanAllah, make him to be accepted by Allah. That's why there is an athar, Sayyida Aisha, if you make one sincere sajda to Allah, devoted in full humility, Allah will elevate you to the highest paradise. So if it's like that, if you seek in your life, striving to get to that sajda, you will be really the successful one. And then the last one, the seventh one, is al to the love. You love to say, La ilaha illallah. You enjoy to say, La ilaha illallah. Because you love Allah. And you love His Messenger. And you make what governs every love you have in your heart is the love of Allah and His Messenger. Everything that knock your door to say, can I enter to be loved in your heart, is said, first to check with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, anything that is lawful in this dunya, halal money, business money, your parents, your children, your sibling, your family, they are dearer to you than Allah and His Messenger, and striving in His sake, then you are wicked people. Why? Because you have that love to govern the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will be lost. And look subhanAllah in this ayah, qala wa jihadan, and striving in His sake. Why striving in His sake? Because the striving is the proof that you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The striving is the proof. If you say, I love Allah, where the striving for the sake of Allah to show that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So which is reflect your sincerity, which is reflect your, your truthfulness, and which is give us that you are true a person who loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the conditions, dear brother, respect the sister, for us to free ourselves from, from being superficial, free ourselves from worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the outside, but really dig deeper to change ourselves, to make this aid a beginning, a muntalaq, is like trampling to a new life for you that is defined by your submission to Allah. However, it might be a burden for many of us to say how, what the Sheikh was saying about seven conditions. Let's summarize it in one point. One point. This point, dear brother, respect the sister, is a raghbatu. A raghbatu is what you want in your life. What do you wish in your life? That will define all the conditions that I have mentioned. What do you wish? You used to have successful job. You have a lot of shortcomings in those conditions. You wish to be the greatest person on this planet Earth. You are far from Allah. You wish to be the greatest engineer. The same thing, you have a lot of shortcoming there. 
So if you look, and today in Arafah are the people, the Hujjaj in Arafah, you stand with yourself in, in, in their conversation, truthful with yourself, say, what do you love? What do you wish in your life? It's going to define who you are. And the Raghbatu is hoping, but hoping in action. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they give us the example of the family of Zakariah. They used to raise for the good. وَيَدْعُونَنَا And they calling upon us رَغَبًا Hoping وَرَهَبًا In fear وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَشْعِينَ And they were humble to us. That's the intent of the days of the Hijjah we said is to attain humbleness. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said بَشِّرْ الْمُخْبِتِينَ That's why the complete submission how can you gain it? By that humility. By that humbleness. And Allah said about the believer in Surah Al-Mu'minun, the believers, قَالَ وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَهُ أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ They were raising and giving and praying. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, Ya Rasulullah, because these people are sinning, that's why they are in this situation. She said, no, no, Ya Ibn al-Sadir. These people are raising for the good, but yet they fear that Allah will not accept from them. Those who are hasting to do the good and those who are those who race for the good. So this is the way how we ask Allah today in Arafah and tomorrow in the Eid for Allah to bestow upon us the ability to have that complete submission so to be among these people. To have that wish, that dream, that hope that to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Check yourself today. Ask sincerely because you're going to make dua for Allah to help you. And you ask, what will be, should be my best wish, my best hope? Simply, look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be gifting today the people in Arafah. He said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in hadith called, they came to me, disheveled, subhanAllah, covered with dust. That's, that's the, the meaning of submission. How beautiful. You travel distant place, come from distant past to come to Harafah, disheveled, covered in dust, and begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And that's what we want to do it with our heart today, if you want to be forgiven. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be boasting about them, the dwellers of the heaven said, look, my servant came to me. Look at them. قَالَ فَأَفِيضُ عِبَادِي مَغْفُورًا لَكُمْ Leave from Arafah with the forgiveness. And the Prophet said, in that day is the greatest day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set free people from the hellfire. So your wish, the true wish for a believer is to be first forgiven and second to be freed from hellfire. Can you make this our wish? Can you make it the wish that is going to be defining your irada, your willpower to engage you toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you raise for the good that when you know that you are Muslim, that you are true submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He reminded the believer, He said, Wathkuru, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gift on you. Behold, He took an oath from you, and you said, We hear and we obey. That's the submission. We hear and we obey to elevate ourselves, to honor ourselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, from among you, from among you, they will be saying, Oh Allah, give us from the bounties of the dunya. But they're not caring about the akhirah. He will not have any share in the akhirah because he does not care about the akhirah. And we don't want to be like those people. We want to be like those people who mention them. After that, قَالَ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً and among them those who said, O oh Allah, O oh our Lord, grant us in this life good and in the hereafter good and shield us from the hellfire. Those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored, they will say such a thing. فَنَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ فَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا وَالْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ بسم الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى أما بعد 
Allah defends the believers. And certainly you are one of the believers you want to be taken under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Under the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's one condition, beautiful, simple condition. Elevate you, honor you, dignify you, free you, and give you full freedom. Freedom from worrying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, whoever will follow my guidance, there should not be no fear on them. And they should not even grieve. And this is, subhanAllah, a guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you still have fear and grief and worry and all those problems, which means like we still didn't attain the peak or the level of the true submission to Allah, that we strive to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, help us. Then you have that hope, you have that wish, you have that dream. Don't make your dream to be the dunya. It's okay to have good dreams in the dunya. That's very fine. Allah will help you to achieve them. Allah, if you want, subhanAllah, tons of money, Allah will give you. If you want the rizq, Allah will give you. If you want success in your job, Allah will give you. But make the highest love is Allah and His message. The highest dream that you're going to be forgiven by Allah. The highest dream that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you. When you go have anything from the dunya, you make sujood shukr for Allah to help you use what Allah gifted you with for he increase in his worship, increase in his obedience, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is our Eid. This is how we need to think about our Eid. It's not to eat meat and go sleep. No, it is to eat meat, to express the gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As to stand today with yourself and have a time, subhanAllah, and just talk to yourself. Correct that wish, correct that dream. And be truthful to yourself. Say, that's not right. Tomorrow you're going to die. Who's going to be with you? At the last breath, all the dear one around you, they cannot help you. Wallahi, they cannot help you. They only can cry. They will be weeping. You see them weeping and nobody can help you. You die, nobody can help you. You enter the grave, nobody can help you. You resurrect, nobody can help you. In all the stages, even in this life, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you. So how come you will not submit completely to him with reason? Just convince yourself with the reason, with the common sense that we have as a human being. And dear brother, respect your sister, these days are a beginning, as I said. Because we do not end the glorification of Allah today or tomorrow. It is starting. It's like giving you, like activate and generate a new power in you. Look Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he said and I finish with this. Qal, when you finish from Arafah, when you leave Arafah, remember Allah. Subhanallah, they just get the gift of the forgiveness. And now leaving Arafah, qala fathkuru Allah inda al-mash'ar al-haram. Remember Allah at the sacred, you know, place or al-mash'ar al-haram, the sacred rite which is Muzdalifah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, qala fa'idha qadaytum manasikakum. When you have, you fulfilled your sacred rites of hajj, Remember Allah. As you used to remember for those mushrikeen, disbelievers, your forefathers, and more and much and great remembrance. But dear brother, respected sister, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the beginning. So we'll make our Eid completion of the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in remembrance, to increase us in dignity, to increase us in honor, and to use the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help each other. Come together, united, under the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not any other system or any other ways because those will not help. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, only will Allah defend the believer who have completed the submission according to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the true submission. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the gift of truthfulness and sincerity and devotion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to elevate our ranks to make us from those who be defending, protecting and caring about and watching over. Allahumma rabbana khfil lana dunubana ajma'een. Allahumma rzuqna sidqa wal ikhlasa wa mahabbataka ya arham al-rahimeen. Allahumma rzuqna hubbak wa hubba man yuhibbuk wa hubba kulla amalin salihin yuqarribuna ila hubbak. اللهم لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليه اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة 
وقنا عذاب النار ربنا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة يرحمكم الله